first questions that we need to answer whenever uh, steampunk physics comes up is what is ether? You may have seen two different spellings of it, but uh, the spelling of it with the A only came along uh, more recently when uh, we discovered the gas ether. So whenever we talk about ether, we're not talking about some, the gas ether, which is spelled this way. Now this is the way that they used to spell in the past because they didn't need to differentiate it. Now in more recent times, it's spelled with an A. And now, uh, you may have also heard of it called uh, the luminiferous ether. It's because it is believed to be the medium that light travels in. For a moment, let's, let's step back and look at some of the ancient understanding of what ether was. Uh, the ancient understanding of ether was, well, you had earth, water, air, fire, and spirit. Uh, now, to relate that to today, that would be solid, liquid, gas, plasma, ether. In other words, what I'm saying is it is believed to be the fifth state of matter. Uh, or actually, it's, it's what space is made of. Flash forward to the 19th century, and uh, some of the first inklings that uh, we needed in ether uh, came from prisms, and that uh, light could be spread into different um, wavelengths. Now, they didn't know it was wavelengths at the time until they did uh, interference experiments. Now, what interference is, is that when I've got two waves in the same place at the same time, if the peak of the wave and the trough of the wave are lined up, I get a bigger wave. However, if the peak of, of a wave and the trough uh, of another wave are in the same place at the same time, they flatten out, they cancel each other, they interfere. It's called destructive interference. There's also constructive interference, if you have, hear that terminology. That's when it doubles the size of it instead of eliminating it entirely. So now we really need to get down to what is a wave. So why is it that the idea of ether, which used to be an ancient idea, why did we then reintroduce this, this idea in the 19th century? It has to do with light. Initially, the idea of light, well, we had the corpuscular theory. They had ideas about it being like, you know, uh, ballistic, like little bullets. But after, after these experiments and finding that it was waves, they determined that it absolutely must be traveling in a medium. Now, what do I mean by medium? Um, for instance, a lot of people know that if you scream in space, no one can hear you because there's no air. If there's no air, there's nothing for sound to travel in. Sound travels in the air. Uh, ether, or what was called luminiferous ether, was conceived to be a, a type of medium that was absolutely everywhere. In other words, and this is a little difficult to understand because that means that where there's air, there's also ether. Uh, you'll understand this better later on when, you, when uh, we discuss ether as basically that it is the basic substance that all matter is created from. In other words, um, Everything is made of ether. Now, we'll get to back to that in a moment. Uh, but let's get into what is a wave, okay? Now, uh, whenever you look out in the ocean, you see a, a wave on the ocean. Uh, you tend to think of that as a wave. But that is not uh, something that can exist by itself. It is something happening to something else. Just like, uh, you know, you can't uh, hold, you can go for a run, but you can't hold a run in your hand. Uh, it's a concept, it's an event. Uh, same thing is true of a wave. A wave is an event, and so they knew that there had to be something waving. Now, what, is, what exactly is that? Well, what happens is when you disturb a medium, okay, so like think about if, if I were to have a big barrel of water, and in this big barrel of water, I suddenly like had a, had a big stopper. I could pop it out, and like a whole bunch of water would gush out, and then like close it back up again. What would happen? Well, the water would gush out, and so there would be an area where there was not as much water. And then the other water would need to would try to rush into that area. And this would happen as a wave. And then when it rushed in, it would bounce back and forth, and you have these waves. What a wave really truly is, at the very basic, basic level, it's a compression and rarefication of a medium. So what's happening is, as it's trying to find its equilibrium, in other words, as the water in the barrel is trying to balance itself out, it's crushing together and then going apart and, until it finds a happy medium. A happy <laughs> it, try, it tries to find a middle point between the pressure of all the water or whatever that medium is made of. Now I'm using the word medium too many times, I hope I don't want to confuse you. Um, so the idea is if we can see light and it can interfere, that means it's a wave, so therefore something must be waving, something must be getting compressed and then trying to reach its equilibrium as it goes through the wave process. Uh, this is the reason why the idea of, of ether was introduced, and that's why it became the dominant idea, because anything else, 
any other idea of there not being a medium would be nonsensical. Now, you may right off the bat say, well, isn't it still kind of a magical, you know, explanation? I mean, didn't, you know, Einstein now eliminate all of that? The truth of the matter is, as late as the 1930s, which was at least 20 years after Einstein came up with general relativity, in other words, he had published most of his, his really groundbreaking breaking, uh, papers, he actually stated that uh, the idea of there not being any ether at all is an absurdity. So uh, whenever anyone tells you that the idea of ether is absurd, tell them, no, even Einstein, after he had developed his theories, knew them very well, could still say the idea of having no ether at all is absurd. Um, so, because, well, there has to be something that light is traveling in. The ancients uh, described it as the upper air that the gods breathe. What's interesting about this is that uh, if you've ever uh, seen some of the ancient aliens or the advanced technology that may have existed in the past, that is great for the storyline of steampunk and the ether, because uh, perhaps that's where some of the technology came from and some of the understandings that it was solid liquid gas plasma ether, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. That idea could simply be an ancient understanding instead of the nonsense we typically see it as today. Further along, Tesla was uh, actually well known uh, to uh, spend time with Swami Vivekananda. Now, uh, pay no attention to my spelling here, I think I've got it completely wrong. But um, he spent time with Swami Vivekananda. He was, uh, Vivekananda was the, uh, the, the person who brought the uh, Vedic types of religion and uh, what we can consider to be Hindu. He's the one who actually brought that to the U.S. Uh, Tesla was absolutely fascinated with what he heard from them, saying that they had some of the some understandings of reality that he was just starting to uh, uncover himself through his physics experiments. One of the quotes that Tesla uses as uh, some of the ancient understanding that uh, can be found in Vedic texts is that they described um, all matter as infinitesimal worlds of prodigious velocity. In other words, what he's saying is that uh, everything is, all matter is a whirlpool or a uh, vortex of ether. Uh, and so let's go on to um, what I was talking about with the fifth state of matter. What does that mean? What I'm saying is that when we look at solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, and then ether. We, if we say ether is the fifth state of matter, what, I, what I'm saying is that empty space is what, it, what we are made of. And that if we, think of, um, we think of matter as heavy and dense, and uh, when it is, in fact, matter is bubbles, is bubbles in ether. All right, where do these bubbles come from? These bubbles come from the vortexes. Uh, one of the things that a lot of you know is that a tornado, what happens in the, tor in the center of a tornado? There's a vacuum. Uh, well, that is the kind of the basis behind ether theory, and that all atoms are basically little whirlwinds, little vortexes, that result in a vacuum of ether in the center of them. What I'm saying is that matter is a less dense form of ether. Now that's very counterintuitive to think of us as the less dense things, as the you know everything we think of as matter and everything that's in empty space as something that is far more dense. But as you get further along in the, the theory, you'll see how that makes a lot more sense with what we know about uh, about physics. Um, I'm going to continue on here for a moment. For instance, one of the first things that they discovered about uh, ether that really didn't make a whole lot of sense is the principle of uh, wave transmission, the speed. Okay, now that in most cases the rigidity or uh, the how quickly a wave travels in a medium uh, is due to how rigid it is, how how dense it is. Is also um, those are usually correlated. So, for instance, if I were to push on the end of a really long slinky, you could watch that wave slowly travel to the other end. Uh, if I were to tap on a piece of wood, now, if it was a really long piece of wood, you might actually be able to uh, make out a little bit of the vibration, but it's really better if I were to take like a really long string, for instance, and pull it tight. You know how you can snap it and watch the wave travel? Well, the reason why you can see the wave travel is because it's traveling very slowly, because you basically what you have is a, not very, uh, a medium that is not very reactive. Uh, in sound, uh, as, as, the, uh, as we get closer to sea level, Air gets more dense because there's all the air pressing down on the other air, and so air is more dense at sea level, so sound travels 
faster at sea level than it does up on a mountain because the air is less dense. Well, here's the thing. The speed of sound is like 700 meters per second. I, I don't know, something something like that. And it's uh, But compared to 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,282 miles per second anyway, um, that is how fast light travels, which is incredibly freaking fast. Uh, so they knew that light traveled extremely fast, and so it was very strange to them to think that empty space would uh, would be something that is uh, that where you know in empty space something could travel far faster than it does in any other known substance. So basically, this indicated to them that uh, that ether must be the no most dense substance in the universe. So that, that starts to make a little more sense.